Hey everyone, welcome to Glitch Free Gaming. I'm Kieran, and I'm here to take you guys through four Switch games that you might not have played. Uh, so if you're a Switch owner that's been you know, playing all the biggies like Splatoon and Mario Kart and Zelda and stuff like that, there's a few smaller, not necessarily like indie games, but in some cases indie games that might have kind of slipped through your net that you might have missed. So I'm going to go through some of my favourites of those. First up, we have Graceful Explosion Machine, which is an arcade style scrolling shooter in the vein of something like Defender, uh, or if you've played more recently on PS4, uh, Resogun is a good kind of comparison for it. Uh, to be honest, it didn't actually grab me to start with, it took a few levels before I actually really got into Graceful Explosion Machine, but now that I have, it's definitely kind of one of my favourite games on the Switch. It's like an incredibly intense and difficult, you know, shoot 'em up that is. It takes place in very kind of contained spaces that you're fighting against waves and waves of enemies. Uh, and certain levels, you're kind of defending a spot against waves of enemies, and you're just blasting these guys down one at a time, collecting all the gems, getting power ups. Uh, well, not power ups, getting like kind of combo power ups to get the highest score possible and basically get stars to finish the level and progress through the game. It's really really fun. And the thing that makes it really fun is how your ship controls because there's lots and lots of different kind of defender clones and arcade shooters out there in general. But the way this one works is you have four weapons. You have your kind of general little pea shooter that does a bit of damage but doesn't you know do a whole lot but it's useful. It'll take down most enemies with enough time. Uh, you have a giant laser that basically kind of works as a sniper almost because it's really precise. We'll go through a bunch of enemies and we'll just hit one one point basically really hard. You have a missile barrage that will just shoot missiles everywhere around you. You can point them somewhat in a direction but they're still kind of random. They'll see kind of nearby enemies and they'll just kind of swarm out and wipe everything out. And then you have like a close range, almost kind of sword attack that kind of swipes around you, takes out a bunch of enemies really close to you, does a lot of damage, but you have to be really close to enemies. Uh, it's really good if enemies start to surround you, basically. And the way that this works that makes it really cool is the pea shooter runs on its own meter, basically. So if you shoot it enough, it will overheat and you can't use it anymore. But the other three weapons all run off of a separate meter that does the same thing. So you can't use the better weapons constantly because they will overheat and you'll be stuck with this pea shooter. Or the pea shooter can then also overheat and you'll be stuck with nothing, usually only for a couple of seconds though. Like it's, the, the meters overlap in such a way that it's really hard, if not impossible, to be able to overheat both of them and not do anything for long periods of time. Uh, you also have a cool dodge that lets you go through enemies but doesn't go through uh, bullets, so that can be useful to get away from things but is also really, really dangerous. Uh, it's just really good, it's really fun, really fast, it looks really pretty, I, I don't really like the music in it that much, it's, it's alright, but it's not the greatest thing ever, um, but yeah, I definitely think it's one to look at, it's a really fun arcade shooter, and there's a lot of those on the Switch just now, mainly because there's a lot of Neo Geo games coming to the Switch. But in terms of new ones, this is kind of the only one on there, but it's definitely a really good one. It would definitely hold up on the other consoles as well. So that's Graceful Explosion Machine. So next up we have Goner, which is a roguelite platformer uh, in the vein of something like well, almost every game that's coming out these days, but I guess for me I'd compare it to something like Rogue Legacy. Uh, you go through rooms that are kind of randomly generated, or given in a random order at least, and fight lots of enemies and you get different upgrades and power-ups and weapons and stuff like that based on, you know, mostly random chance, but it's, there's some of them that are kind of secrets that you have to find, and it's just really cool. It's got a really nice style to it. It looks real pretty, it's got this kind of weird, uh, just this weird art style to it in general where there's not a lot of colour, but the use of colour is, you know, very strong as a result. You know, there's a lot of things with outlines, and there's a lot of things that have, 
you know, just they, they stand out really nicely from the environment. Um, it's really cool. So you get one of the main components of it is you get these heads that your character wears, these skulls, and each of them gets different abilities. So uh, while well, the starter one gives you way more health, uh, while well, the other ones gives you less health, but lets you get past one of the other mechanics, which is when you get hit, you lose health, but also you lose your head. Your head will fall off, and then you have to go and pick it up again. And if you don't pick it up again, and you get shot again, or hit by an enemy in some other way, before you pick it up again, then you die straight away. You basically have no health unless you have one of these skulls. So, it's just this really cool mechanic. Uh, and one of, the other, one of the heads lets you get past this mechanic if you want. Like you can say, I don't mind having less health because I don't want to have to go and chase my head every time I get shot, so that works well for me. Or you can decide that you don't mind chasing your head, in which case you can go for uh, maybe a head that lets you hover by holding the jump button instead of you know just jumping, or one that makes you rotate as you jump, which is kind of useless, but it's kind of cool as well. Um, and then also there's a big selection of different weapons as well, so you get uh, just the kind of generic pea shooter that you start with, it's just a nice little pistol that you can mash on and shoot loads of bullets from. There's a shotgun that has an absurd amount of recoil and will just send you flying backwards throughout the stage. Uh, there's a big laser that will do blast as well. And there's a bunch of other stuff as well. And it's just really cool. Uh, there's some really great music in it. Everything in it is just, you know, it's got this really unique kind of style to it. And it's, it's very cohesive and I, it's, you can just look and hear it right now and you definitely can see and hear what I'm talking about. Um, and then also, there's just cool things like when you die, like most roguelikes, when you die you go back to a kind of little hub area that you know, you'll start off in and do all the little bits for upgrading and stuff like that. There's not really much in the way to upgrading, but you get to kind of choose your different heads and your weapons and stuff like that. Basically just kind of start and load out before you go and do your next run, which is kind of awesome. Uh, it's really difficult is the one thing I'll say about it. It's up there with kind of the hardest roguelikes around, um, you know, some, like your Spelunkies and your roguelikes and stuff like that. I definitely recommend taking a look at it though, it's one of my favourite games on the Switch. It's more than anything else on this list, except for possibly the next game. Uh, I've played just crazy amounts of this, it's the game that I can just pick up and play whenever, and it's really cool. It's got quite good use of HD Rumble as well, um, it's, it uses it for the bullet shooting and the recoil and stuff like that, and it's got a good feel to it, which is something that in general, I've not really been super sold on HD Rumble, but it's, it's cool. So yeah, that's Goner. I definitely recommend you take a look at that one. So next up, we have one of my favourite games. It was one of my favourite games on PS4. It's just one of my favourite games in general, really. Which is Puyo Puyo Tetris. So, Puyo Puyo Tetris originally came out on PS4 and Xbox One in Japan only, uh, like three years ago, four years ago, something like that. And I imported it for PS4, played a crap load of it, especially online, like the online multiplayer is one of the best parts of this game. Uh, but it is at its core basically just a, a combination of the Puyo Puyo games, which have not been super popular here. Um, you might recognise them more from some of the spin-offs, things like uh, on the Mega Drive there was, or the Genesis if you're American, uh, there was uh, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which was basically just a Puyo Puyo clone. And it's a combination of that and Tetris, which everyone knows how to play Tetris. So it's pretty awesome. It's got a crazy amount of uh, different modes in it, so you, if you just want to play Tetris, you can totally buy this and just have an easy way to play Tetris. In fact, the Switch version adds something the PS4 version didn't have, where on the main menu there's uh, three buttons and one of them is just play Tetris. If you want to just play some Tetris right away, you do that. You hit that button, you go and you play some Tetris. Uh, the other modes, there's like, you know, you could just play Puyo Puyo straight up, which Puyo Puyo is... If people don't know Tetris, obviously, I think everyone would know what your, you know, shapes are dropping down and you've got to line them up to make lines to get points. 
Pew Pew I think more people would be less familiar with, which is you're trying to line up blobs and you're trying to line up four of the same colour. They don't have to be in a line specifically, they don't have to be, you know, uh, you know, they don't have to be in a box or anything like that, they just have to be touching. And as long as four of them are touching, that'll wipe them out and then it'll knock everything from above, will fall down into that space. So you use this to set up combos where you're, you know, if you've got a row of three blues and then you've got a row of three greens on top of that with one more blue on top of that, then you drop a green on, wipe it, blue falls down and you get a bunch of extra points. And it's all about making these big crazy combos, which I'm not super good at, uh, as you'll probably see from some of the footage that it's playing there. I'm not great at the Puyo Puyo part of this, but I enjoy it and I've been playing a lot of it, so hopefully someday I'll get decent at it. Uh, other modes in it, there's Versus, so the main bulk of this game is uh, as a Versus game. So either you play through the single player and it's Versus against the AI for the most part, or you play online against other people. And the way Versus works is you have either standard Tetris, standard Puyo Puyo, as you get points on either side it will... Uh, drop junk on the other player's side and whoever gets wiped out first loses basically. Then there's uh, the fusion mode which is Tetris and Puyo on the same board which is not really the best mode in the world. Uh, it has a bunch of weird unique rules like Tetris blocks are bigger than Puyo's and so they will squish them so they'll push them up on top of them so you drop a Tetris block and it will slowly kind of sink through the poos underneath and knock them up above. It's weird, it's not really my favourite mode in this game, but it's worth trying out. Uh, there's party mode, which is actually 100% my least favourite mode. Uh, it's basically just the same as the versus mode, but you have power-ups, and the power-ups do things like, you know, invert the other player's controls, and they'll uh, make the other player's board entirely black so you can't see anything, and then have like a little kind of spotlight swinging back and forth so you can see parts of it. That bit's not great, mainly because if you're playing Tetris and you're playing against someone who's playing Puyo Puyo, it's way easier for the Puyo Puyo player to just spam the power-ups because Puyo Puyo you just need four of anything, or four uh, of the same colour to be able to get a power-up, so you can easily just spam it that way. It's interesting as an idea and I get why it's there, but it's just not great. Uh, then there's the challenge mode. Uh, which has all the kind of basic stuff that you expect from Poo and Tetris. So Tetris has a sprint mode, a marathon mode, and an ultra mode, which are basically just, you know, try to uh, get as many lines in this period of time as possible, or try and get 150 lines in the fastest time possible, that kind of thing. They're all really cool. Uh, that's probably what I've played the most of in this game, actually. Uh, and then Poo Poo has similar things as well. Uh, it has, like, its fever mode, which is they set up a bunch of pre-made kind of Puyo puzzles and they'll give you block or blobs and you've got to try and like set off the chain reaction in the way that they've set it up and I'm, I'm not very good at that one I'll be honest. Uh, then there's the Big Bang mode which is the same idea as that uh, Fever mode from Puyo Puyo if you're playing the Puyo Puyo side. Or with Tetris is again it's a bunch of like pre-made uh, lineups of blocks and it will give you individual Tetris blocks and you'll drop them down and you've got to just make lines every single time and do it as fast as possible to get as many points. It's a really weird mode and it's actually really fun so I do recommend that one. And then finally, probably my favourite mode in this game which is the swap mode. Which is, you play a, you play Tetris and Puyo Puyo on two separate boards and there's a timer and every time a timer runs out it switches between the two. So everyone gets to you know, play both sides and if you're doing really bad at Tetris you can still win that game just by doing really well at the Puyo side or vice versa. So it's quite a handy handy thing and it's really fun. Uh, and then there's a weirdly in-depth story mode as well with like a lot of different characters, a lot of text, it's all kind of explained, all, te all the story goes through in a kind of visual novel style. There's big text box at the bottom and there's kind of character portraits that animate slightly. It's all fully voiced which is kind of surprising as well. Um, the voice acting is... It, it varies. Some of it is good, some of it's... 
that's some of it's good. Let's just let's be positive on this one. Um, the Japanese voice acting was probably a bit better uh, from what I heard of it, but then again, like I don't speak Japanese, so maybe it's just because I couldn't. I'm not as familiar with what bad Japanese voice acting would be. Um, but either way, Puyo Puyo Tetris, one of the best games on any system. But if you have the Switch, I definitely think that it is the place to pick it up. Because you get all the awesome online multiplayer that the other versions have, but just being able to play it portably is actually a really cool thing. Uh, it has individual Joy-Con support as well, so you can play it multiplayer just with one Joy-Con each, which is... I know some people complain about Joy-Cons being too small, I actually quite like them for that. At least if they have the, uh, the little extender thing on top of them, I do think they're too small if you don't use that. But I think uh, 1v1 Tetris, or 1v1 Puyo Puyo Tetris, is really good on the Switch and it's one of the best ways to play it. So yeah, Puyo Puyo Tetris, I recommend that. It's almost musical when you two are in sync. I can't imagine a more adorable battle than this! And last but not least, uh, but one of the newer releases actually on this tar list, uh, which is Slime Sand, which just came out like the week or two before I record this. So Slime Sand is a weird one because it's a game I previewed on PC for the site a while ago now. And it is a 2D platformer, very uh, Super Meat Boy style, like very difficult in places very fast paced, when you die it just instantly resets you and it has all these kind of levels that are basically just one screen uh, some of them scroll a little bit but they're basically just here's a screen, you're gonna get through this and you know, get to the end and also there's like a collectible which is in this game apples uh, there's also these kind of coins that you can collect as well that are much more hidden than the apples are apples are usually just put in a place that are difficult to get to without also fucking up the level. So you kind of have to do both. Um, I really like this one. It's got a really nice art style. It's the one thing I don't really like about it, I complained about it in the preview as well, because I didn't really like it even back then on PC, is that it's it's got this 4x3 resolution because it's going for this kind of retro game look, which is fine, and it works really well and it plays really well. Uh, but the default kind of side border art is this kind of the setting of the game is that you're this blob, slime sand, that has been eaten by a giant worm. And so the kind of default side art is like kind of the insides of the worm kind of gestating or, you know, they're, they're going in and out as you're kind of uh, playing the game. And they animate a lot and it's really distracting. I don't really like that very much. But there's a lot of upgrades in this game and a lot of uh, unlockables and things like that. And one of the unlockables you can get is a selection of different side art. So you can actually just replace that pretty quickly, which is good. Uh, you can also, you know, customize your character, give them some really, really basic sprite kind of uh, hairdos and uh, accessories and things like that, which is, you know, goofy, silly. It does in general have a really good kind of sense of humor to it. Um, I played more of this on PC than I have on Switch so far, but I've been playing through a Switch relatively recently, and you know. I'm enjoying it, so I'm going to play a little more of it. But I definitely do think that it's worth playing. It's for my money. Uh, other than perhaps Goner, is probably the best 2D platformer on the Switch just now. Uh, Wonder Boy, which isn't on this list, is also really good, so that's worth looking at as well. But I think Slime Sand is definitely one of the. If you like that kind of Meat Boy style in particular, it is one of the best platformers on my system so far. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. So that is four Switch games that are kind of outside the bubble of the bigger releases. You know, the Nintendo big AAA releases, um, which the Switch isn't getting a lot of just now. Although it is starting to kind of get a bit busier as we go towards Christmas. But for now, there's a decent amount of indie games out on the eShop already, not all of them are good. So I'm looking to do some more videos like this if people are interested, to kind of highlight some of the better releases that are out there. So 
I might do a bit more of a kind of in-depth look at something like Slime San or uh, Goner if people are interested in that, or a review video perhaps. Uh, we're not sure yet where we're going to go with videos on this channel yet, but we're looking to do some more stuff. Uh, there will probably be some more board game stuff coming up soon, um, which we are all really passionate about. I think we all... Last year, definitely on the podcast, a lot of us kind of ended up liking board games more than video games that came out last year, so this year is definitely a lot stronger in the other direction, but hopefully we'll be able to update the channel more often in general with whatever is kind of tickling our fancy, whether it's board games or video games. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of... Uh, this video has kind of more been a trial for me to figure out some stuff about making these kind of videos. So hopefully going forward I'll be able to improve and you know make more of them. Uh, so please like leave comments, uh, preferably anything that's kind of constructive will be useful uh, because yeah this is we're doing something a little bit different from what we usually do. So we're branching out a bit and we want to get better. At it. So thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed.